here at YouTube, I'm back again today for another Kickstarter critique where I take a look at a different Kickstarter tabletop game project every weekday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, give my honest thoughts on how that project is being ran. And today, I am very excited to be checking out the most popular project, or this, excuse me, the second most popular project in all of Kickstarter, the most popular project in all of games, that is Kingdoms, Forlorn, Dragons, Devils, and Kings. Kingdom Forlorn is an epic, massive board game from Into the Unknown, dot, dot, dot. That means nothing to me, so I really don't see why you're mentioning it twice, but hey, apparently it means something to a lot of people, which is why it's already raised 648,000 euros. Now, I am very extra curious to see what exactly is this is, this is tickling people's fancy, because I look at the main image and it looks pretty generic. I think the fact that we still have the date here is completely useless. I'd love to see a time length, an age, a player count, a price, the designer, something like that. Some relevant piece of information aside from a date that's really only going to help people in the past. Now, the other thing is, when I got a board game geek, I was very surprised because the designer has peaked at 8,200 on their top reviewed games. Now, granted, these have very low numbers, but anytime, you know, when you go to that page, you don't expect to see 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 11,000. A typically attached to a 650,000 euro game. So I'm very curious to see how amazing these minis are or the cards are. Something going on here is tickling the algorithm. One of the dates was the end date. Aeon's Trespass. Okay, I don't know what that is. Uh, it says, is that like Aeon's end? $735,000. Oh, and then offering an immersive co-op and solo experience for one to four players. Here's what I'm talking about. I feel like that is so much more useful for me as someone shopping than February 15th, 2022, or you mentioning the name again. Uh, it's just, or you mentioning your name again. Like, it's just, I don't know. I feel like there could be better use of space here. As always, now that I click on it, I actually kind of do want to see what's going on here. It looks like it's got some religious -y stuff going on. Okay, whatevs. As always, when you go to the video, I'm thinking three things. Do I want it? Can you do it? How much is it? Let's go. 12 minutes and 55 G. Okay. Strap in. Epic Lord of the Rings in sounding music. I think that was very intentional. We're getting, I'm getting the idea that we're about to go on some sort of epic adventure. Which, once again, this is a 12-minute video. I guess that's kind of what they're going for. And Zest Trespass was their last game, which is like a Greek Kingdom Death Monster. It's going to be shipped soon. That explains it. Kingdom Death Monster, fear of missing out. Yep, Kevin's got it. Fear of missing out. At dawn, God created the world, and it was good. At dusk, he created man with an immortal soul, but weak to temptation. At night, darkness brought the devils out. For an age, the grand kingdoms of man experienced progress and prosperity, but greed and debauchery always have a prize. As sin consumed them from within, so would the curses devour them from without. One was turned to stone, cold and uncaring. One was drenched in blood and unquenchable thirst. One was deformed with growth, gnarled and twisted. This is, this is, I, I, they're showcasing the artwork, which is gorgeous, which I guess I like, but man, I'd really love to see some sort of gameplay here. Uh, Kevin said, story and theme can sell me, but I don't need an epic length intro video. Yeah, I'm kind of agreed here. <laughs> like, can we get to One the point? One was drowned in the mire of depravity and fetid mud. Still, a darker curse covered the land in an ink-black fog and removed the kingdoms, now forlorn, from the face of the world. And for a time, man was humbled under God and life could continue. But now the fog lifts, bearing the sins of kingdoms forlorn. Their curses, given time, will swallow all <laughs> lands near and far. Oof, 13 Hope minutes long. Dim, but yep. night has not fallen yet. Artwork! Not when there are still brave knights, noble, vile, obsessed and... The main writer is a novelist, so I think that's why they're taking the artistic approach. That actually makes a lot of sense. Thank you for filling me in on that, SK. Uh, that gets me more excited about the game, though. I will say that. Uh, 
seeing how this is a solo cooperative, probably dripping with lore. Errant, willing to stand up to the darkness and venture into the unknown. I'd love to see some of that lore on cards. Fail. Or the board. Are you strong enough? Or driven, or mad, to face the terrors, the fallen kings, the eldritch dragons, the unfathomable devils. Test your metal, carve your legend. But be wary, lion-hearted one. The kingdoms know your own. Okay, and then we have minis. You don't want to miss out on these minis. You can't miss out on these minis. You know how much you could resell King to Death Monster for? Are you a fool? You can't miss out on this. You need to get the deluxe everything, everything, everything package. And now, now I'm getting excited. Look at the cards. There's lots of text. Unique art style. That looks really impressive. Uh, these minis are gigantic. I think. They're showing everything. Oh, yep, it's a table hog. Got it. Zoom in. Minis. I can feel my wallet trembling, Kevin says. It's a dragon! It's more minis! They're not gonna narrate, I am. Hi guys, this is Maxim Donitsky, hey. the CEO and the creative director. Okay, so I do like the fact they're showcasing some heavy hitters in the background. I see TI4, I see TI4 with the expansion, Star Wars Rebellion. So I'm not getting the epic game from the guy who's played Catan and Risk. Because we've all seen that game. That game exists. That game is out there. So I like the fact that they put that in the background. Director at Into the Unknown Studio. Here with our latest and most ambitious board game yet, Kingdoms for Lauren. I also think this is really low-key a great shot because it just shows the epicness, like the really huge size of everything. I'm seeing the inlaid board here. They're showing me a lot. Dragons, Davis, and King. In the past, we've watched successful campaigns for miniatures like Nymphs and Eschaton, but we're probably most well known for our campaign uh, for Eon Shadows Odyssey, the giant epic adventure. So I would recommend subtitles here. I understand what you're saying, but it's a little bit close, and any time it's a little bit close, I always feel like it's great to have subtitles. Game. Your support for that project exceeded all our expectations, and for that, for allowing us to follow our dreams, I'd like to thank you all, thank our backers, supporters, and fans, we wouldn't have done it without you. That's now a nice we're back chair. with Kingdoms for Lauren, our love letter to the dark fantasy genre. Kingdoms for Lauren is full of innovative Wait, mechanics. Wait, so was that? Did you say deck building? I was distracted by the chair. I think you said deck building. Your support for that project exceeded all our expectations, and for that, for allowing us to follow our dreams, I'd like to thank you all, thank our backers, supporters, and fans. We wouldn't have done it without you. Now we're back with Kingdoms for Lauren, our love letter to the dark fantasy genre. The what Kingdoms genre? Lauren, thank you all, thank our backers, <laughs> supporters, and fans. We wouldn't have done it without you. Now we're back with Kingdoms for Lauren, our love letter to the dark fantasy genre. Kingdoms for Lauren is that full of innovative mechanics of lavish art. DSRK, don't know what that is. Can someone explain to me like I'm five? I'm scared. <laughs> and giant, beautiful miniatures. It tells engrossing dark stories fantasy. in an ever-expanding world full of deep lore. The basic Lord. premise of the game is quite simple. Ooh, showing off acrylics. Acrylics are hot. Uh, I just got a game, Uprising, which Nemesis Games, by the way, fantastic 4X game that I'm really digging. Uh, but they use acrylics. I think those are going to be the new hotness. You choose a knight, start your adventure, venture into the kingdoms with other knights, battle giant monsters and mobs of enemies, collect treasure and loot uh, and gold, uh, gain arcane knowledge and most importantly, um, make difficult decisions that influence your personal stories and your character. Kingdoms Forum is an epic shared world board game. It offers an innovative solo or co-op experience for up to four players. Uh, you quest through a grim medieval fantasy world filled with deep, innovatively structured stories <laughs> and endless roguelite. Sorry, I'm laughing because Tim just said the last five to six minutes is literally what I just like to call minis porn. Just spotlighting minis. Because that's... Man, I just, did a, I just did a video today where anytime they're focusing a lot on the minis, I'm very... I want to see this rule booklet. I'm very concerned about this rule booklet. Just just out of... And that's, that's stereotyping. But... Man, I, there's, I, there's a, I've seen a lot of games like this, where it's like, look at our minis, look at our minis, look at our minis, then we just slide that rules in there, and you're like, oh, these rules suck. 
Delve. Hope that's not the case here. You customize your knight and play with your friends at home or uh, pack up and take your character to any board game group around the world. Uh, whether you prefer solo or co-op play, uh, wandering from campaign to campaign, following the story or going on unscripted uh, legendary expeditions, we've got you covered. Kingdoms Forlorn is full of big, bold new ideas. Uh, the game is solo operative, which means you play as a group, uh, but your story, your journey and your choices are yours alone. The solo operative. Now that is a word that I think should be on the marquee. Instead of listing your name twice and the name of this game twice, maybe solo operative. That's a really interesting concept. Narrative campaign mixes deep storytelling with an unstructured delve flow to create a unique playthrough every time where your quests cross over, oh, hey. interconnect. Oh, but hey, it's not just minis. All right, cool. Good stuff. Honestly, this video is not for me. My ADHD is raging hard. I have zoned out. I'm trying to stay in input into the game, but it's just... Uh, and influence one another in a myriad of surprising ways. Kingdoms for... Cool. That looks neat. I don't know why it paused. Did this yesterday. I think that's a sign. That's a sign, right? <laughs> that's a sign that we're done with this video. Right? Because it's... Been like Kingdoms for long okay. before. Tactical combat. Strategic adventuring. Oh, no, Tim! Tim just said the rule booklet went live today, which is always a concern to me. Whenever the rule booklet's not ready day one, I'm always so curious about that. Because it always just reeks of me like when companies say, Hey, uh, you can't talk about this movie or this game until the day it's launched. They're just hoping to get that huge, big, big group of people. Then they're like, oh, hey, next day, here's the rules. That always scares me. Uh, they need to put it in 1.5 to 2 times speed. Deep, suspenseful stories with yes. endless possibilities of unscripted gameplay and emergent storytelling. Everything plays in a dark fantasy world of danger and I never do this, I never do this. ...ensures that the battle remains interesting until the very end by making both you and your enemies stronger as the fight goes on. The hard co-op... Okay, so now we're actually talking, it sounds like, in the weeds of the actual gameplay the mechanisms. combat paradigm ensures that the battle remains interesting until the very end by making both you and your enemies stronger as the fight goes on. The hard co-op mechanics promote teamwork and cooperative tactics. You can either fight together or die alone. You want to experience dozens of hours of great gripping saga of knights, monsters and villains? Dozens it's of right hours. Here. You want to just open the box and play for fun, loot and glory? We've got you covered. Kingdoms for Learn, Dragons, Devils and Kings. The freedom to play however you like, mm. wherever you like. The future of board gaming is here. Back us now on Kickstarter. Okay. Okay, <laughs> I need to add this to my bit. Anytime you say that you're the future of board games, I'm always a little bit concerned about your rule book. Like, that is just something that I have heard too many people say. Um, okay, it, yeah, it looks like minis. Now, here's the thing. I hate to be the Debbie Downer, but I go to the designer, and, like, this is not typically what I expect to see. These are not typically the numbers I expect to see on a game that makes $600,000 in one day. Now, granted, maybe these games aren't out, but I'm just saying... I tend to err on the side of caution because I imagine there is going to be a huge price tag on this one. All right, five created 15 backs. We are a team of entertainment industry professionals and more importantly, a great group of close friends. We created our company into the unknown to tackle ambitious, unique projects to explore strange, beautiful worlds and share those wonders with you. Over the years, we've been involved in every facet of the fantasy hobby world. We created role-playing games, written speculative fiction novels, designed and translated board games, developed and produced video games. We've got experience in working in small and well as large teams. We've got the passion and the will to create great art and games. We invite you to participate in this odyssey with us. So they have the pedigree on can they do it. Uh, can they produce the product? I'm still concerned about the rules just because of a lot of things I see. But look at this. This is some great customer service here. Let's check out these comments section. Make sure these aren't flaming dumpster fires. So Aeon's Trespass Odyssey, which apparently is not out yet, but it's about to be out. I think that's what people said. Uh, always like to check back here in so many... Ooh, 16,000 comments. Wow, they are really tickling that Kickstarter out there. Good for them. The rule booklet, the insert, the secret Santa. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the delay in this update. It's going to be early next week. It's Thursday. Poland has been hit with... Uh, yeah, they said there was a total COVID. So there, there are 158 comments, 94 comments, 36 comments, 83 comments. Dang, they are doing some fantastic customer service here. Top notch. 
Hope the games live up to the hype. Wow. Monster Slaves of Slotvia will return. There's probably no Monster Slaves. Failed to fund. So this was two projects ago, and it actually didn't fund. Okay, that's not what I'm expecting to see there. Not to say it's a negative thing. It's just it's, a, it's surprising to me. So this game is not out. This one did not succeed. And then this is this is this is something else these are minis these are just straight up minis is that what we have here a beautifully highly detailed series of titans so this is not a game this is not a game in any way shape or form these are just purely minis which okay i get it you can do pretty stuff uh let's make sure they get they did the pretty stuff though store update live you can buy the stuff uh beast master finish hey, so is this a game a beautiful highly detailed series of titan resin ministers and spider Breaker. no i don't think this is a game I've never played a campaign legacy game, so I don't know how to evaluate the player turn loop for those games. Yes. I've tried Game of Death Monster a couple times, and it was really, really stinking cool. I don't get those vibes from this, and maybe it's just because I zoned out on that really, really lengthy video. Um, but I'm not getting those vibes. The art book is finally here. So this is, what is this? Breaking news, a third new nymph was revealed. How did, what did they do? Customer service wise, they step stuff up here. Uh, so what? What am I even? Any news about the digital art book? I'm still very interested in reading. So by that is, uh, so this is this is so they made some minis. So can you do it? I don't feel comfortable. They've never done a game that I'm seeing here. Am I missing something? Is this out? Do people love this? Is that? Let's see. Is this out? Gameplay review two years ago, two years ago, one month ago. So this is the top to most anticipated. Yeah, and this is not out yet. It does not look like. So ho could we hold our Kickstarter horses here? $600,000 in one day from someone who's never made a board game and their other stuff is, is very lowly rated. Ooh, uh, ATO was their first big board game. ATO. This one? It's not out yet. How is it their first big board game? How, like, there's no reviews for it. Man... Man, oh man, I got a bad... I, got, I hope I'm wrong. At dawn, God created the world that was good. At dusk, he created man. We already heard this. Welcome to that. A truly tactical dungeon crawler. A truly cooperative adventure. A truly narrative-driven whatever. King to Forlone is the newest epic massive board game. The newest epic massive board game. From Into the Unknown. Offering an... Which, so here's the thing. It's your newest. You don't have another one out. <laughs> but I gotta say, you are selling it like you do. So I will say kudos to them. How are you going to run the ball? You're going to run the ball hard. That's what you're going to do. Offering an immersive co-op and solo experience for one to four players. Quest through a dark medieval fantasy world through deep, innovatively structured stories and endless rogue light delves. Customize your night and play with your core group stuff. I just want... Whoa, that's a nice shot. That's a good shot. Where's the price? So, after the video, do I want it? Eh. Can you do it? Nah. How much is it? Don't know, but I'm expecting a very high price. Why you back us? You want to get it at a discounted price. Just like with our previous game, our Kickstarter campaign offers everything at a discounted price. As the And that's always really troublesome to me. If there's a huge COVID outbreak and you have to, like, you don't have things ready and in place, and your first game isn't even out yet to the masses, at least it doesn't seem like it, why are you pushing this? Like, that always concerns me when a company tries to get their next game out the door before the last game is done, when it's their first or second game. Um, when did their last game fund? Did they fall into the COVID hole? Fake it till you make it. It is fake it till you make it. Uh, I believe it's probably about to ship right now. They, they had some great customer service there in the updates. I didn't really look. Uh, you want to influence the process? You want to be part of something great? <laughs> you want to be part of something great? Uh, back our campaign okay stretch goals hey we're talking about stretch goals i do love stretch goals followers if we hit certain what's click why am i clicking I'm cl i love clicking five hundred minutes the deep fog lifts okay so they have stretch goals ready for updates okay nice sends me straight there that's good september 2019 man that could, that, that that worries me <laughs> Introducing a mechanic and several cards that represent various followers that you can hire or rescue throughout the game. That sounds like a really cool aspect to add to the game. I'd love to see some cards or what these look like, how many I'm going to get. Any of this would be just delightful. Or how many followers we got to even unlock this. The amount of information that is presented in this stretch goal area is astoundingly low. Outpost. Introduce a new mechanic and several... And here we go. Now we're showing me some stuff. Introduce several cards and book pages that represent various outposts you visit between delves. Now that looks hot. That's giving me some folklore of the Affliction flashbacks and I like that. St. Urbane Hunt. 
This is more minis and standees. The Hunt of Sewen introduces a new low-level mob enemy, the Rat Wolves. It completes with four standees, an enemy sheet, AI, and BP cards. That's awesome. Why did we hit it? Don't know, but cool. Hunters and ambushes. This stretch goal introduces two many new mechanics. Gee, these are banger stretch goals. These feel like the kind of things that they already knew were going to be in the game. Uh, love the ideas of Outpost and Followers. Yeah, likewise. The, the more just random stuff in this game, the more alive the world feels i think that's part of the reason why i love you know red dead redemption it's a great open world games it's just that you can do everything there's always just different things to do and different little quirks wandering monsters and knights of the fen and so they just posting this every update oh gilly okay so i'll be very interested to see how that goes if they keep hitting stretch goals so frequently that they're sending out four in, in a day and a half uh so this is uh, more stuff so now we do know so we're getting it pretty much every hundred thousand euros like Simon, yeah? Like Simon. More coming soon. Daily unlocks. So we have daily unlocks and we have stretch goals. All leading into the price. Presumably. Presumably. The price is not after this. I'm going to be super annoyed. A board game that you cannot miss. Solo operative. Good thing we trademarked that. A new bold vision for adventure games. Each night follows an individual campaign with personal consequences that seamlessly weaves in all other night campaigns of the story of the kingdoms themselves into a one-of-a-kind procedurally generated saga with deep narratives and multiple storyline twists. It sounds like Time of Legends, Destinies, but on steroids, which I'm all about. No, it's not Time of Legends, Destinies anymore. They got rid of the Time of Legends and it's just Destinies and hopefully they lean more into less of the Time of Legends in the next version of that, but still a fantastic family game. Anyway, I digress. Tabletop shared worlds with drop-in, drop-out co-op were starting to promise the world. I do like that, but at the same time, it makes me even more scared, especially when the rule booklet was not on here day one or a rough version of the rule booklet was not on here on day one. That's better than nothing. Dynamic difficulty and smart director. There are no level requirements for playing with others, both in story campaigns as well as in the post game. In other words, you can take your experience night on a delve with newbies and thanks to the present smart detector, once again, trademark, the game will balance itself so everyone enjoys an appropriate challenge level. And right now, I am getting a very, very heavy cart in front of the horse vibe. Vibe. Hopefully, I am wrong. Kingdom Four Loads is the next step of evolution for board game dungeon crawlers with tactical delves that have purposes and stakes. Gone are the days of pointless wandering through random rooms. In KF, every move of your party counts, and even though the kingdom is created as you play, ensuring no two delves are alike, it's highly focused, quest driven, and narratively rich. So, I just want to backtrack real quick and say the game company that is promising this has zero games released right now. Like, that you can go out and buy. I, I think at all like you could probably you pre-order right now Th but just put that into perspective that this is like that that concerns me <laughs> when they're like yeah we know how to make minis and now we're just gonna butt into the board game hobby and trust us we know what we're doing we're doing everything better we're gonna trademark it then you're gonna pay us a whole bunch of money because we're doing everything so freaking awesome and hopefully they do hopefully that is the case and they absolutely crush this and they become a titan in our industry and they hold a grudge against me and go grovel at their feet or something i hope that happens but i am just I'm concerned, especially considering I imagine this price is probably going to be larger than $500. And just saying that out loud just makes me feel ridiculous. But I think I'm, that's, I, that's what I'm expecting. They've set me up for that. So if it's, you know, if it's substantially less, then good. Good for them. I think they did a great job. Hard co-op, a true co-op experience where you need to really work with all the players to succeed. Both during battles as in well delves in their story encounters we achieve through co-op actions. Things you do directly benefit other players. I just want the damn price. Permanent changes. Oh, last but not least is the way your previous campaigns will set up the world for next. Knights who finish their campaigns will leave a permanent mark on their corner of the kingdoms for long. So it's a legacy-ask game. It's okay to use that word. I know you want to be Mr. Ho. Hey, we're doing everything totally new, but you call this a legacy game. You're going to put some butts in the seats. Granted, you're already putting a lot of butts in the seats, but I think the word legacy game immediately just gets people tickled. Kingdom Four Lords, Dragons, Devils, and Kings is built upon our tried and true mechanics of combat. How is it tried and true? What the hell am I? What is this craziness? This game is not out. I can wait. Can I buy this? Can I buy this right now? New pre-orders. No, this is a pre-order. So people sell the pre-orders. This game is not out. Could we stop talking about how amazing we are before the before previews come out? Like, mm, okay, early bird. Back us day one during the first twenty-four hours and get two early bird rewards for free. Uh, if this is now not something I can get, I'd like to see this, you know, get rid of it, because at this point I can't do it. Early Birds, Little Sirs, Little Mini, back in the first 24 hours, you get this exclusive mini, which you gotta get. You gotta get these minis. You can't miss out. Look at you. You're gonna miss out all these minis, you sucker! 
fear of missing out. Oh, it's only $139. Wow, that's actually pretty reasonable. I was expecting that to be much more. Now, granted, this is probably not the whale. I'm expecting $500 for the pledge level that I want. Now, I will say this is a nice, long, scrolly, sexy shot. Maybe tell me inches in additions to millimeters, because most of the people here are probably from the United States of America. Yep, 1666 to 644. Big ups, Germany. Do they have a designer that has some clout they forgot to mention, or what? I don't... I don't think so. <laughs> like, I don't think so. I think that the people are just... Woo! We're riding the roller coaster, and they are... They are letting people on the roller coaster. They're talking as if this game has come out. It's spectacular. It's fantastic. You are... are we are revolutionizing. You know, and good for them. I gotta tell you, I'm not convinced, but... But they are selling themselves... Like, they're the real deal, which is good for them. 200 battle cards, zoom in on this. I'd love to see this zoomed in on. 300 plus night cards. So now, now we're getting to the bread and butter. I'm talking 500 cards along with tons of miniatures. Okay, I don't feel like this price is unreasonable. If you have a great community engagement for years, you have a loyal fan base. So true. So true. 120 other cards. Look at that. That looks gorgeous. 50 site maps cards. This looks really good now. Once we stop talking about the lore and whatever the hell else we're talking about, just got into the damn components, I'm in. Especially with this price point, rule booklet, learn to play, need to see you, kingdom book, 100 plus pages. Okay, that's a lot of lore. Once again, I know you're trying to just be all about the theme and whatnot, but when you tell me your kingdom lore book is 100 plus pages and it's from a professional author or whatever, that's the kind of information that I think is, is, is just gold. Like, that just gets my solo gamer brain back buzzing that gets my playing with my kids when they're a little bit older game buzzing my game night game buzzing like this could be a game we come back to when we have a certain type of like this is great four night books 10 chapter branching campaigns around 25 to 30 hours each wow 150 hours of campaign gameplay you said dozens i was expecting 36 to 48 hours and there's 150 so i think the use of the word dozens in the video was not a good choice of words but maybe i just fixate on weird little things this price is crazy low for all this was so expecting 299 plus to start yeah likewise i'm expecting so this is there it is there it is that's a core game that's where they get you all right here we go yep this is no this is just another box this is the expansion for 82. Okay, cool. Reasonable, I guess. No, it's not reasonable. 82 freaking euros for an expansion. What the? $93 for an expansion. No, this is... I don't know. I don't know if it's unreasonable. I don't know. Kickstarter's so confusing nowadays. What's reasonable anymore? Uh, so we got minis. Cool stuff. Four enemy sheets. 100 knights. Mm -hmm. This looks... Wait, did you just copy this stuff? Is this just copy and paste it from up top? 100 knights and loot's card. So we got those three. Get, let me see this. Let me see this real quick. 100, 300. Yeah, that's just copy-pasted. Wait, is it copy-pasted? Guy holding up the sword on the left side. Far left side. He's holding up the sword. That's copy-pasted. What the hell is this? This is it with... Yeah, mm, yeah, I don't like that. That's weird. That's just weird. These... So, are, so I have a question into the unknown. Are these specific cards right here that you are showing me as part of this campaign, as part of this expansion, in fact, cards from this expansion? Because they look like they're exact same cards from up top, from the not expansion. And let's double check. Now we got a little guy with a bow and arrow thing. Let's see. We got the little guy with the bow and arrow thing. Where's that guy? Guy with little bow and arrow thing. This is weird. Please, chat, let me, let me know. Am I just hanging up on a weird topic here? Is that kind of odd? I just, that's not normal. Normally when you're showcase, I, I bet you showed me different minis though. <laughs> they don't need to see the cards. No one's here for the cards. They want to see this giant young devour dragon. Okay. 10,000 succulent fears book. This one we're not telling you how many pages on. I'd like to know that. Uh, and then we have pledges. So now we, okay. So we have the $139 core pledge to make it simple. There are only two pledges and the big base one, which is the one you're going to get the core game with the expansion at the 221. Yes, you are just hanging up. Okay, thank you, Tim. It's, it's just so weird to me. I just, I, I've just i never seen anybody else do it. So when I see something that's completely new to me on Kickstarter, despite the fact I'm on Kickstarter way too much, uh, it just, it's it, it's weird to me. 251 bucks. Uh, inserts, includes one copy of the Kingdoms for Alone, Dragon, Devil, and King's Game Box, and all unlocked applicable stretch goals, as well as the Principality of Stone, 10,000 Succulent Fears Deluxe Expansion. Will it fit in the box? You can check the complete concept of the core game and the Deluxe Expansion at the top of the page. The pledge level allows you to uh, do orders. There may be other pledges levels introduced if the campaign goes on, so check on us regularly. And that's where we are. We're to the 
Kickstarter is now becoming a drug dealer sort of thing where it's like, oh, no, no, it's 130. Trust me, you're going to love it. 130. Come in the comments, the updates. We got excitement. We got people buzzing. We got $600,000. We're going to sell a whole bunch of stuff. And we're going to we're going to be unlocking so much new stuff. And you're just not you're not going to want to miss out on that stuff. So really, this $150 price or whatever it is, is really going to end up being three to five hundred dollars. I think we all know that this is probably what is going to happen here. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm just being skeptical. But that's someone said it earlier. It's like Seabon. Yeah, Tim said it. Well, they don't use the Kickstarter as a pre-order store, but really do develop it. That's what many people are confused. Hmm. Uh, so, but anywho, I feel like they're doing it well. How much miniatures do you really get? Show me inches, because once again, so uh, 150, one of these equals 20 of these standing on top of each other. That's an interesting diagram. Okay. Add-ons, your dice, your battle mat. I'd love if you zoomed in a little bit so I could see the side. Card sleeves. Gee, many Christmas 700 cards. Wow. That's just for the base game. Did some digging on BGG on the designer, Marcin Wellinky. Outside of Un Into the Unknown, he also did End of Atlantis, which appears to be out. End of Atlantis. Ah, let's check that because I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying, oh, End of Atlantis. Oh. Because I just, I get so nervous when I see something like this. End of Atlantis, the revised edition, currently ranked 15,907. What was the re original, though? I bet this is going to have a substantially higher one. Uh, 15,597. This one is out, maybe? I don't know. I'm scared. The world, things, stuff, theme. What am I looking for? I'm looking for shipping. I'm looking for a how to play video. I'm looking for a gameplay video. I'm looking for the rule booklets. I'm not really looking for more theme here. Have never seen minis done in inches. Yeah, why can't we do that? Like, I understand that they are in millimeter size because America's stupid and we're, you know, we got inches. But when the majority of people shopping on Kickstarter from the United States of America, I think it just helps me get a better idea of how large your mini is if you say it's six inches as opposed to 300 millimeters. Because I'm a stupid American. Gameplay highlights. The tactical dungeon delving. This this piece of artwork looks great. Curse and threat. Stuff. Story decisions. Great. What am I? I, I just There's just so much here. Things monsters stuff where's the shipping i want to know the exact price i'm gonna pay it just make it st oh my god this, just, i guess we're focusing on components now like because these are all the cards these are just the things in the world yeah i could tell that an author did this i'm just i'm just very curious as to how it's all going to come together gameplay wise and you have not shown me a gameplay video. oh hey tabletop simulator I am now 32 minutes into this Kickstarter, and I'm, for the first time, getting some sort of idea of table, of, like, uh, okay. Let's keep going. Here we go. What is this? This is you, folks, in a minute. Okay, don't care. Don't care. Reviews and previews. Are there any actual... Oh, so this is a review. Okay. Honest and precise Ooh. prototype thing. And war games, but for kingdoms fall for... Uh, what's the word here? What, is it a prototype? Or is it a review? Or is it a preview? Oh, it looks like it's... What the, review, okay. Must have a 2022. Awesome. I'd love to see a quote from that. Man vs. Meeple, Kickstarter preview. K. Okay. Paid some good money for that. And because... Uh, and they know. This is, this is important. You pay good money if you want one of these fancy thumbnails... And you want the initial buzz. So good for them. These are all good things I'm saying here. 2022's most anticipated. Here's the unboxing. First look. Is there a gameplay? There we go. Oh, well, Excellent. That's what I want to see. And, I, and I'm wondering if that's the most popular video. But honestly, I'm so over this Kickstarter campaign now. Three things to know. Unboxing. Unboxing. Stuff. Videos. K. Prototype versus final game. So one gameplay video. That's kind of surprising to me. You know, if you have a copy of this game as a reviewer, you're kind of like, wow, I can print myself some money just by sitting down and playing this game. And the fact that I only see one in there, that concerns me. Hopefully there's more out there to be seen. Prototype versus final game. Well, stuff, old fonts, you're telling me things are going to change. Okay, prototype rule booklet, buried. Check out the links below. Why can't I just check it out right here? Demo rule booklet. Oh, because there's more than one. Demo rule booklet. Let's go. Prototype content. That's always a good start. Prototype rule booklet. Oh God, where's the setup and game? Setting up the game. Here we go. Uh, prepare loadouts. Ooh, this is 34 pages. Okay, there's lots of pictures, illustrations, examples. This looks like a base. It looks like a base, but you kind of expect that with a game like this. 
Uh, I would read that. That would honestly be my biggest thing. I'd read that rules and see if it's for you. Or watch the gameplay. One of the two. European, United States, just especially with with that, with with their track record. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. If, with their track record as game creators, I am super worried. Uh, that sales tax included in prices. Awesome. That's something to spotlight. Love it. And it's big. It's in text. It's by itself. That's how we do it. Spotlight it. So 27, 35, 33 to 39 to most states. Get bad Alaska, Hawaii. Uh, okay. So $33. So now I'm looking at, uh, I don't want you. 1,101. Yes. Most people want this one. 2,065. So I'm looking at a... $290 game right now, but who's to say it's probably not, it's probably going to get higher once we start getting more stuff, because let those, the stretch goals, like, like I said, they don't feel like stretch goals, they feel like they're just, they have stuff, they're like, alright, we're going to unlock this stuff, which I guess is always what it feels like, so I guess, that's, that's stupid, <laughs> just strike that from the record, rest of challenges, okay, wow, whoo, <laughs> so much, there are four gameplays I've seen already. Excellent. Amazing. So they only chose to spotlight one. Thank you. And that's why I love this. I swear, if I have to hear the word solo operative or dungeon delver one more time, I'm already tired of those words. Is there an early bird? Uh, I'd like to see this reloaded, like, uh, like reload from Colossal Games. Organize. Because once again, if my question is question 16, I have to read for the first 15 to get there. It's just annoying. All right. Updates. Double stretch goal unlocked. The kingdoms are drowning in the deep frog. 41 hearts. 29, or 29 comments. 34 comments. This is some good engagement here. I'm excited to see what they're doing in these updates. And no other kingdom has been so afflicted like the prosperous yet perilously situated Dutch of Utrecht. So they were le are leaning hard into the theme. Okay, good. Stretch goal unlocked wandering monsters and the stretch goal is a new mechanic that represents wandering monsters. This mechanic enables select monsters in the game to appear in non-native kingdoms. This is cool. This is a lot of information here. Like This is a big, beefy, pre-prepared update for pretty much every stretch goal that we're going to get. And it's going to be really interesting to me to see uh, if we're going to be able to see a difference when they finally get to the stretch goals that they weren't expecting to hit. Like if they get past it and to see... Because there's so much polish on this right here. This is insane. Like, this is... That's like as impressive as some people's Kickstarter page in one update. Kudos on them. That was like a thrift shop of different pieces of information about that. All right, solid. Whew. This, I need a cigarette after this one. All right, 1,753 comments. Is it still possible to give her fringe back to the Commonwealth process? So these are people excited about the theme. Love the Eggnet and appreciate the unique look. So, okay, good for them. Good for them. So, Kingdoms Forlorn, Final Grade, Dragon Delves and Kingdoms. And here's what I always say about this segment. I am never grading the game. I have never played this game. Okay? I am grading the Kickstarter presentation of the game. And while I have some very deep concerns about this game based on the track record and just the timing of the game and all that sort of different stuff, but uh, I feel like they sold it. They sold right past. They went right past all my concerns and they sold themselves at such. Five created 15 back. Let's be honest. Are you clicking on here? Are you going to do the research and say, oh, it's two minis? It's, it's, there's no games. Like, it's, uh, this isn't out? No, most people aren't. And so I think they did a great job of selling themselves. They're going to have some fantastic customer service. They are very clearly going after the market of deep, fa dark fantasy people and fear of missing out people. And I feel like they're doing a fantastic job of catching both of those people. And let's see, um, new people? So no, it's mostly just Kickstarter backers. They are, they are moving the needle. I'm not a big fan of that style of video. I thought it was way, 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 way too long. But whatever they're doing, they're doing a damn good job of. So, do I want it? I'm not convinced. But, I want to be. It looks super fun and super engaging and it's a crazy fun game. Can you do it? I know you can do minis. You have the prototype. You have everything in place. You knew who you needed to get videos from. You... You have fancy images and graphics and lore and a snazzily made video, even though I don't like it. So, but can you do it? Yes. I feel like you got your ducks in a row. That shipping section, no vet. That's that's huge. That's huge. That's a full point grade bump up for me. Actually, half point grade bump up because I think honestly, I'd mention that on the marquee if you did have free vat. That's just huge for majority of the world. How much is it? Uh, the price. I, I, you did it to me. I thought it was going to be higher. And then you hit me with 158. And the 158 looks solid. And then the 251. 
I think it's, I just won it. And so I imagine there's going to be the 336 and then the 425. And um, so final grade on this one, I'm going to give it a B plus because it's, it's quite honestly, this is everything I really hate about Kickstarter in this project. It's minis porn. It's just insane amount of fantasy and lore, which is great if the gameplay is great, but just the over reliance on just not gameplay just concerns me the track record concerns me but still i think they did a great job of selling what they got given the circumstances so b plus on this one let me know in the comments below what is your final grade on kingdoms for Lone, dragons devils and kings and as always thanks for your time youtube bye bye well i got a lot of windows open gee oh my gosh where are they how do i escape i'm trying to get out ah